Welcome to day 51, where we're going to learn the easiest way to load and store into files, but maybe not the most secure way. Okay, so saving and loading from files does feel like a very manual process. Well, there are some things that local storage in RAM does much better. For instance, if we put something in a list, it's very easy to add and remove something or change it whilst it's the computer's memory. That is a lot more difficult when we've saved something to disk. Or is it? Let me show you my secret source for autosave and autoload. Let's start by saving something in an array, a very, very simple array. So I've written a reasonably simple program here that creates a list of the events that I've got coming up in my life. It's basically a calendar. And what I'm doing is I'm adding the name of the event and the date, turning that into a row and adding it to a 2D list. I'm then with the remove function, I'm then searching through that list to see if I can find that particular event and removing the entire row if I find it. And this is great, except the problem is that I now have to manually set up the saving and loading each time and it's going to be an enormous faff to get that to work. Let me show you autosave. At the bottom of the infinite loop, we want to make a little bit of room and make sure we're inside that loop at least one indent in. We are then going to automatically save the contents of the list every single time the loop finishes. So that should be when any change happens. Let's do that. F equals open. Let's call it calendar. And let's open it in W mode. We don't need it in append mode this time because we're going to completely delete it every single time we go to add to it. I'm going to F dot write the string version. So we need to cast it this time of the array. Now you do need to cast it because we can't just dump an array in a file. We have to turn it into the text version of itself first. We're then going to close it. Now that might feel wasteful, but let's have a look at what happens when we run it. Let me add in my friend Jason's wedding. Okay, when is that? That's going to be the 21st of the 1st, 2023. Notice that created a file straight away. Let's explore that file and see what's in it. Well, Jason's wedding and a date. It's definitely a 2D array. Let's add to it. Let's add my dentist visit, which is the first of the first 2023. Notice that file expanded straight away. What happens if I remove something? Let's remove that dentist visit. I don't think my dentist is open on New Year's Day. It went, it disappeared straight away. So all the changes that we're making to the 2D list are being replicated in the file. There is a problem though. Watch what happens when I launch for the first time. Okay, let's add trip to the vet. Now that completely wiped out what was in there before. So now I'm going to forget to go to Jason's wedding and I'm going to be in some trouble for that. I tell you, I'm going to get some angry texts from Jason and his bride as I fail to turn up. Now that's because we've only got autosave. Autosave when it starts up uses that blank list, which we are defining right at the top. Auto load then is where we're going to open up what's in the file. The first time the program runs and replace this. An autoload code needs to go right under the definition for the array. We're going to open the file again. We're going to open it in read mode and we're going to do this. Now that eval method is the special source in this. Eval is going to take text and convert it into running code. So let's examine what's going to happen in those brackets. F dot read is going to read the contents of the file. That is the square brackets, and the definition for the 2D list. The computer will still think it's text though, because we converted it to a string originally. To get it to turn back into a working 2D list, 
we need to feed it to the eval function. The eval function is basically a function that goes, Oi, see this bit of text? That's actually code. Can you make it work? And so it'll go, yeah, here we go. It'll turn into a 2D list, which is then assigned to my events. So it should be full. So if I stop and run this again, that should have loaded everything up into memory. So if I add Jason's wedding back into it, who knows what date it was, then it gets added to the open file and the file doesn't get replaced. So those two things are really important here. The auto save code must go at the end of the infinite loop. Every time any change is made to the data in the list, it should be updated. But right at the top of the program, as almost the first thing, once we've created the blank list, we need to try and load the information from the file. This should work pretty well. Why don't you go and give that a go? Do make sure to run the auto save code first. Common problems then. Well, there's only really one common problem that comes from this code. And unfortunately, it is this. Let's see what happens if I delete the file calendar. So if I try to run that now, ah, that crash looks really bad. And what's it saying? It's saying there's no such file or directory calendar.txt, okay? So what's happening is this, is the program is trying to auto load my calendar file but it's not there. And fortunately for us, the open command will just crash if that calendar file's not there. Now, I'm gonna hold off showing you how to fix this properly until tomorrow's lesson, because there's some cool stuff that we can do tomorrow. For today, what I want you to do is if you are getting that crash, you're going to comment out, and that's just putting a hash symbol in front of those three lines, you're going to comment out your auto load code, so your auto save code has chance to work. Once that file's created, we can uncomment that code, stop it and run it, and now it's not gonna crash. Check out some of my code that I've purposefully damaged or moved around and see if you can fix it. Some of it will be syntax errors, and you might find that crash just hidden in there somewhere. Your challenge today is pretty simple. I want you to head back to day 35 and grab the code for your to-do list manager. To-do lists are not much use if the to-dos disappear into the ether. So what I want you to do is to add in auto save code and auto load code to that program. You should end up with a working to-do list manager that saves and loads all your information without too much effort from your part. Don't forget to share it with us in the community by publishing it. And if you're going to talk about us on social media, use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to get a bit more visibility on your messages. Join us tomorrow for day 52, where we're going to look at how we can stop programs crashing when we can't code around that crash.